So we're here now on the couch with Jambi Githable having a yarn. Jambi um, and I have been yarning for a long time and has been with us in the Global Village for many years, really um, sharing his wisdom. And I guess we want to start a bit today. We're, we're talking about country, you know, and we're talking about uh, being welcome to country and acknowledgement of country. And I guess I want to start and ask you a bit about, you know, what is country and how do we connect to it? Yeah, well, for me, um, it's uh, it goes a bit deeper than the, the the general understanding of country is you know, sort of comes down to or is portrayed mostly as a, the lo- a local area, but it's also a lot deeper than that. It's our personal connection. It's our um, our understanding of where we are, where we belong, our our connection to this earth, and. Uh, understanding and being able to feel that in a very very tangible level and very much a um have that as part of your existence uh, acknowledging that in every step that you take so it's uh, uh when you feel that it's like a warm hug from the mother and if you can walk around all day and your whole life like that then it's it's something special Mm. and for uh for a lot of people who don't know that because either you, you come from a different area or you come from a different country or come from outer space, you know, it's uh, that understanding when you know how to open up to it, mm. it uh, it's there. It's absolutely there. And uh, you're not really here unless you've connected, you know. So what strategies, or that might be too strong a word, like... What are some simple keys to being able to connect into that? I guess for me it's something like, you know, even just taking my shoes off and putting my bare feet on the earth and feeling the earth really helps me. Um, watching the bird life, watching the animals around. Like what what do you find is a powerful way for you to connect when you want to drop in? Yeah, well, I don't know how deep do you want to go with this? Uh, I have a little bit of an understanding around uh, trauma, being trauma-informed and all that sort of thing. And that definitely in modern society does play a huge role in why people are so disconnected. Mm. So it's it comes down to uh, the spiritual understanding of your base, um, your, your soul being connected to the earth, being connected to an area um, and feeling, the, uh, feeling that connection to the earth and if you're for, for a lot of people they, this sort of information is just not there they've, they've never been taught it's never been something that, that was spoken about in their home it's never been something that has been expected them to learn in their lifetime so they don't get it and that's that's very unfortunate because what that does is it creates a whole generation upon generation upon generation of people who don't have that connection or don't understand that connection and even worse they run people down who do have that connection so for a um the very first thing yeah is to understand one what is a human being what is a your spirit what is your your soul inside your body what is your spirit connected to this earth what does it feel like what does this earth feel like and uh it's something that you have to constantly be aware of and constantly be willing to evolve with because she's evolving as well. As we speak, the earth's shifting. It's a, it's a bit of a common understanding internationally through indigenous um, peoples that right now the earth's sort of like uh, rewiring her central nervous system. So that's why everyone's feeling a little edgy. That's why things are a little bit little bit off everything's a bit out of balance even the most grounded people are going through hell right now because we're trying to we're still connected to the earth as strongly as we were but she's got a different flavor she's got a different little vibe going on so we're all trying to catch up so for those of us who have no understanding of that at all it's just like getting whacked hard and not knowing what the hell happened but at least some of us who are who do have a bit of a connection already understand that okay we've been whacked hard but we know what's going on we just 
got to be aware of what's uh, happening. Be cool to do the checking in on the self, you know, make sure we're not not doing anything stupid, understanding that, you know, this is a process mm. and uh, rolling with it and um, being very aware of what that's doing to us personally and what's happening to the people around us so we can weather through this uh, rewiring and uh, come out the other side without too much damage, too much scarring and uh, be ready to walk in the new way, walk in with that, with the retuned with the earth when she's ready to come come good and, yeah, it's crazy days. Thank you for the wisdom. I think I met with uh, Uncle Magpie, who's our Minjimbul Sogman, earlier in the week and he spoke very similarly, like, we need to look to the stars and there's a whole new way of being, a whole new way of moving on the earth and it's been spoken that this would come and... I think like you say, we need to sort of slow down and feel and listen and, and be prepared to change or adapt and do things differently and, yeah. So with, um, you know, with this Black Lives Matter movement, obviously a lot of our audience um, I think are very involved and, and interested in how we can support uh, our Indigenous people in this country. You know, what advice would you have uh, for people who want to be involved in, and support, but also it's uh, not their place to to speak on behalf of, or what could we do and what can we do that can be supportive and helpful at this time? Okay, yeah, this is a this is a topic that's been going on for a long time since the beginning of slavery in America. The before that, you know, it's it's been happening to every generation, every every race on the planet that isn't, uh, well, everything that isn't, um, what's the term? Uh, wealthy white man, yeah, unfortunately. That's, if, if we're, if we're going to talk about, talk about it in a logistical way without putting any pressure on it, we sort of zone it in on that. Um, there's more behind that, obviously. It goes back a lot deeper. It all depends how far you want to dig, how much you you want to be responsible for what you know. That's how far back it can go. So what and I'm so sort of hearing there is that the, can like do your research, like find out. Yeah. So you know your story. Right. Your so the 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 reason for demonising one thing or another, for picking on one race or another, for supporting one race or another, labelling yourself as one thing or or, some, or or against something, it's it's all ridiculousness. It's all divide and conquer. It's all separation. It's all, yeah, it's um, fear-mongering. It's all that crap. We don't need it. We don't. The... With Black Lives Matter, I mean, we've had we've had uh, the deaths in custody issue going on for a long time. We had so much happening here, and it's funny how you know America's got to do something before people start looking at it in their own backyard. It's kind of sad. You know, we've had obviously in the in the grand scheme of things, there's been a lot of support for for our stuff, but not um, not as much as Black Lives Matter. I mean, we've really got to look into this, these things. If we, if we can't be supportive of everybody and be understanding of everybody in our own little communities, we've got to look at the reasons for that. You know? and, and then we don't get singled out as black, as white, as Japanese, as masculine or feminine. We don't, get, we get, we don't have those separations put in place to divide us and have us arguing amongst each other. We've got to look at why we are doing that. What is it that makes us give our power away to something else to forms a division in our own in our own mind, in our own home? You know, that everyone knows that racism is something that's taught. It's not something that you're born with. Mm. You know, we're not stupid, mm. but we allow ourselves to be played like that. Why? So when it comes to things like Black Lives Matter, obviously. Black Lives Matter, 
that doesn't mean it's, it's like I saw a meme on Facebook the other day that says uh, just because I say save the whales doesn't mean screw the rest of the fish. So let's get that point of conjecture out of the bloody picture. It's so stupid. You know, just because someone says Black Lives Matter doesn't mean we're against everybody else. That's crazy. It means we're human as well and we happen to be more under attack than you do. So please pay attention. That's what it comes down to. If we're allowing ourselves to be played by the media, as, as we do, we can't say we don't. We're, that's where we're getting all our wisdom from because we're not asking the elders, are we? No. Where's our elders? In the nursing home. Lonely. That's another point of insanity. For a human species, what the hell? We've got a natural way of doing things. The elders raise the children because that wisdom needs to be imparted right from the get-go. While the adults are busy trying to learn their stuff, to become elders, they're not ready to teach the kids yet. Yeah. There's a certain structure in humanity on how to raise a healthy human being. We ain't doing it. You know? <laughs> Everything needs to be brought to a grinding halt. We're, we're past the point of changing the, changing the, uh, the structure because we've allowed it to ride on too far. So everything needs to be pulled up and said, right, what are we doing wrong? And let's fix it. Mm. Now, when it comes to Black Lives Matter, absolutely. What the hell are we doing wrong? You know? why, is, why is it that people with guns, sometimes, unfortunately, low IQs, to <laughs> get given the position to uh, actually shoot people? You, know? you think these people want to be the most grounded individuals the most solid people that you could ever meet, but they're not. They're people too who sometimes are afraid. You don't want someone with fear in their heart to be holding a gun. and You, you want someone with respect. Mm. So I'm kind of like, there's so much I feel like, Jumbi, we could talk for hours and I could listen for hours, which I think is the big takeaway for me is this learning to listen, mm. to listen to and connect to our trauma individually and collectively and, and work with that, heal with that, you know, actually sort of come to a place where we can move forward without the fears and to actually find a way that we can unite and become one people and do our work individually and collectively. And I'm also hearing from you a lot about like this, we have this big vision and this big international concepts now that we've evolved to this global culture and yet I guess through everything we've all been going through there's this real focus on our local ecosystems and how we play a part in that and mm. connect to that and building our relationships with our, our community and our family and you know like I think that's a, a positive step that we can all take mm. you know, to build authentic relationships and friendships and start collaborating and working together. Focusing Absolutely. forward. Absolutely. And yeah. like it's it's a big it's a big story, it's a big um, it's a big topic, but it all starts with knowing the self. The more you know yourself, without any external influence other than your connection to the earth and your connection to your higher self and your connection to your God, your connection to your your source. You get your information from there first and foremost and then you put that past the elders in a given situation in a given place and then you don't know, ask. Mm. Start with that. Mm. Start with that. Yeah. Don't By disconnecting us from our, from our earth and disconnecting us from our higher self, basically we get all our wisdom from the news feed <laughs> and that's controlled. Sometimes you've got to switch off and tune in and slow down. Exactly. Yeah. Check in. Check in. Learning to check in. Well, thank you, Jambi. We appreciate everything you do in our community. And Jambi does a lot for, um, for the earth and the environment and helping to really stand up and protect um, country as well, which is another beautiful thing. So, yeah, really take some time today to connect, I guess, is, is um, our wisdom here. And thank you for coming and been part of it you've been in the global village a lot is you do you have a favorite moment you'd like to share or an experience that was powerful for you uh yeah i don't know it's all it's all pretty special mm. it's um 
Whenever that fire gets lit, that's yeah. it's always nice. Chambi's our fire keeper. He yeah. lights the fire in the global village and that's where a lot of these yarns take place. So thank you. I think, uh, yeah, like when we're up on uh, – before Splendor starts, mm. we do that We do that grounding the smoking fire ceremony. And the smoking ceremony. Then you really get to feel the energy of the land come in. And mm. unfortunately a lot of people don't get to know that that's an actual thing as they mm. when they turn up. But it would be really nice next time you're there – Feel the energy of the ancestors, allow yourself to completely cut off everything that's going on around you and just feel mm. the ground there yeah. and then give thanks and respect. And yeah. Uh, always. Always. Thank you. It is. It's a really sacred land there at the Parklands and we're really grateful to be able to host the, the festival there. And, yeah, next time you come, really take time to drop into country, feel the land and give thanks because we're very blessed to be there. <laughs>